All right, Matt. <clears throat> At least you don't have to do the airway this time. Yeah, true. <laughs> All right. So let's start off with this is a little bit more thought provoking again, and we'll talk through a bit of this. All right. So, Matt, you, <clears throat> ER today is a third year med student. You have a young woman who's been brought in. She's a trauma victim, and she was in a car crash. She was trapped in a car for about an hour, wrapped around the tree. She comes in, I want you to notice that her eyes are open here, and she is actually talking. The airway is a concern, but we will address that later. Okay. So we'll talk about that. So with that said, go ahead and get us started. I get uh, on mo people on monitor, oxygen, vitals, IV, and how are you doing today, Miss? All right, so she'll tell you. you can... My belly really hurts. So she said her belly really hurts. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, Matt, you <clears throat> am in her belly, and she was a healthy girl, healthy young woman. She's not pregnant, okay? And you find her belly distended, rigid, and hot, okay? It's hot mm -hmm. to touch. What do you think's going on in her belly? Sounds like an internal bleed. She has a bleed. So, would you say hypovolemia then, guys? Yes. yes. All right. So with that said, her blood pressure is 70 over 40. So she's decompensated shock. Matt, why is the heart rate 160? Because the heart's trying to up the cardiac output. Uh, there's not enough fluid basically going back to it. Absolutely. So the body's trying to help itself. So guys, do you think it would be appropriate for us to cardio work this and take that away from her? No. Absolutely not. So Rick and I think it's more important than check boxes to teach you guys the most important lesson of all is to treat the patient and not the monitor. Okay? <clears throat> so ACLS, certainly she's hypotensive with a rate of 160. Oh, we need to cardio over. No. Treat your patient and not the monitor. All right. So, but with that said, Matt, we do not want to disappoint you. So all of a sudden there's a change in the monitor. What do you want to check? Uh, check her pulse. There is no pulse. What do you got? Uh, it looks like V-fib. It is V-fib. So while she was tachycardic, ACLS did not apply. But mm -hmm. here, ACLS, ACLS always applies. So we have V-fib. Matt, what do you want to do with this? I want to shock her. Defibr at 200 uh, joules. Good job. So we'll... Okay. Charging paddles. Everyone stand clear. Delivering shock. All right. What? I want to kind of start CPR. Okay. Starting CPR. All right. So before you say it, because you've been answering this question all along this whole time about mm -hmm. the airway, I said we were going to discuss this, and I'm hoping this takes a moment that this is real world treating your patient, guys. And I know you haven't got to do much of this, so this is kind of the fun part. All right. Do you think she can maintain her air? That's not what I'm responsive. No. No. So we would probably want to intubate her. Correct. So we would want to intubate her. So now with that injury, you may even end up doing a crike or a trach. She was talking. However, in the real world, initially, we probably would have given her some succinicholine and atomidate, tried to paralyze her if we thought we could do a standard intubation or crike her. Because the longer we wait, the more swelling and fluid buildup you're going to get here and the harder that airway is going to get as time goes on. So you'd probably, even though it's the belly that's killing her, you would probably want to get control of that airway pretty darn quick. Okay. okay? Does that make sense, guys? So just some food for thought. Just would, not ketamine, would ketamine be contraindicated with tachycardia? No. No. A lot of people are using ketamine to go ahead. Some people are... Um, using ketamine to to uh, intubate people versus using like succinicolin. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, all right. So with that said, see the airway is addressed. Then it's a CPR. What do you want to do, Matt? I'm sorry, what did you say? Two minutes of CPR is up. What do you want to do? Uh, shock again. Or check for pulse. Okay, no pulse. And yes, she is in V-fib, so we'll shock again. Emily? 
Charging paddles. Everyone stand clear. Delivering shock. Alrighty. So <clears throat> there is shock, shock. You want your Continue. team to do what, man? Continue or start again. Start CPR again. And, and what's her one milligram of epi. Good job. One milligram of epi. Okay. And how often do we give it? And is there a max dose, man? Three to, every three to five minutes, no max dose. Good job. Two minutes is up. What do you want to check? Check a pulse. Okay. There is no pulse, and you still have this on the monitor. So I want to shock at uh, 200 joules. You do. Okay, Emily. I'm charging at 200 joules. Everyone stand clear. Silver and shock. Matt, your team back on to what? Back on the CPR. Okay. Shock, shock, epi, shock. What's next? Now I want to administer 300 milligrams of amiodarone. Yes, you do. I'm 300 milligrams of amiodarone. How much more could I consider, Matt? 150 more MIGs. Good job. Two minutes is up. What do you want to check? Check the pulse. All right, there is no pulse, and this is what you see on the monitor. What do we have? We have asystole. You do. So we want your team to do what? Uh, begin CPR. And what do we give every three to five minutes? Uh, one milligram of epi. Good job. Vivian? Giving epi. Epi. Milligram. Good job. Vivian fell asleep over there. I'm just kidding. All right. <clears throat> so you've done that. Now, we've already talked about hypovolemia, right? Mm -hmm. So this lady with her injury, she's got a boatload. She could have a boatload of H's and T's going on. This is why you need a good, experienced team. So she may have hypoxia. She could have attention pneumo. She could have tamponade. She's got hypovolemia. And the list goes on and on and on and on and on. This is why we want to check rule out all the possible causes of asystole or PEA or even be fit. So with that said though, two minutes is up, Matt. Okay. This is up, Matt. 20 minutes is up, Matt. You've thrown the kitchen sink at this lady. Nothing has changed. She is pulseless and in asystole. What is it time to do? Uh, it could be, is it time to call it? Yeah, no doctor wants to do that, but unfortunately this young woman's passed away. But Matt, we have to get to Rosk somehow because I need to test you on Rosk. So do you want to save her life? Of course I do. Of course you do. So we're going to back up about 10 or about 20 minutes in time. And Matthew's going to grab a scalpel in the ER and he's going to crack her chest. He's going to reach in and he's going to clamp a couple of bleeds. And then he's going to reach in and he's going to do direct CPR right from his hand to, his, to her heart. <laughs> Two minutes is up. What are you going to check, Matt? Check the pulse. Matt, you saved her life. <laughs> Crack, saved her life. So what do we have here? We have Ross return of nice spontaneous job. circulation. Nice job, Matt. You didn't know you were going to crack a chest in ACLS. <laughs> <you. laughs> All right. So with that said, tell me about Ross. All right. I want, her, I want to get her vitals. Okay. So uh, vitals are being taken. Um, you've already intubated her. She would be going straight to surgery if you got her back. So TTM probably doesn't apply, but if it did, go ahead and turn. Uh, it's targeted temperature management. Uh, we want to keep her from 32 to 36 degrees Celsius for 24 to 48 hours. Good job. We want to maintain SATs above what? Uh, I want that above 94%. Systolic blood pressure above? 90. Okay. Capnography? Uh, 35 to 45. Okay. And those two diagnostic things? I want a 12 lead EKG and draw labs. 